Some really fun options, both at pitcher and stack, on today's MLB DFS slate. We got Jacob deGrom, Kevin Gosman, Corbin Burns, all at pitcher. There's a value play I don't mind. And you could justify four or five or so different stacks as being legitimately very good options, which means, A, it's a fun slate, but also, B, you're going to need a lot of points to hang with the top end for tonight with a lot of points being likely on the slate. We'll break down ways I am trying to get said points, uh, my favorite options among those good pitchers, and more to get you ready for Monday night slate. Welcome on into the solo shop. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sadas. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire, here to break down Monday's nine-game main slate with lock, for, lock set for 7, 10 p.m. Eastern, for today couple weather notes there are some colder games for today doesn't seem like any games with rain in the forecast but worst one for today is in chicago for the white Sox and phillies very windy and very cold just 41 degrees for today the winds are out to center at 17 miles per hour so the winds help batters not as much as they do at wrigley but they do help but i think it's more than entirely negated by the super low temperatures it's just a really gross day there. Like I was looking at this yesterday and wondering if they would actually play this game. I think they will because there's no uh, snow in the forecast right now. Uh, but it was a thought that crossed my mind. So very gross weather uh, in Chicago for the White Sox and Phillies. think they should play but with downgrade batters there despite the winds being out. Other spots that are colder all on the West Coast once again. Those are in Oakland for the A's and the Cubs. San Diego for the Padres and Braves. And then in Los Angeles, for the Dodgers and Mets. So downgrade batters in those games as a result of the cooler temperatures. Other ones should be pretty good to go. We'll dive into the pitching preview and get you set with some stacks later on in just one second. But first, a reminder, you're subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your these posts go up each and every weekday. No PGA podcast for this week because it is a team play event, but PGA most weeks, MLB DFS every weekday, USC for select events as well. So search for the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. Hit subscribe, and if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well. The NBA playoffs are here. You can turn crossovers into cash with FanDuel. Just visit FanDuel right now and place a $5 bet, and you'll get an instant $150 in bonus bets win or lose. There is no better place to bet all the playoff action than America's number one sports book. Just go to FanDuel and sign up to get $150 in bonus bets when you bet your first $5. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Bonus issued is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG. Hope is here in Massachusetts. Call, uh, Go to gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope and y in Arizona, 1 800 Next Step or text Next Step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1 888 slash chat. In Indiana, 1 800 9 with it. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1 800 522 4700 or in Kansas, ksgamblinghealth.com. Louisiana is 1 877 770 STOP. In Maryland, mdgamblinghealth.org. And in West Virginia, go to 1 800 Gambler.net. Pitching preview for this Monday main slate. Kevin Gosman comes in with the highest salary on FanDuel. His salary is $11,100. Jacob deGrom is 10-6. Corbin Burns coming off a big game, $10,000. Christian Javier is 99. We got Zach Wheeler at 97 with Dustin May at 95. Kyle Freeland at Coors is 92. And then Lance Lynn, Jack Flaherty, and Merrill Kelly are the others at $8,000 or higher. Now for tonight, Mentioned Gosman and DeGrom. Gosman is facing the Astros. DeGrom facing the Royals, which means DeGrom is facing the Royals for a second consecutive start. And I always hate that. But it's Jacob DeGrom. And I'm not sure we have the leeway to be off of him for tonight. The results have not 
always been great so far for DeGrom. His ERA this year is 4.32, and part of that was from the game against the Royals because they did get him for two runs in seven innings. But they weren't really on it despite those two runs scored. They had a 18.4% swing strike rate. Their hard hit rate was 33%. So they did score two runs, but it wasn't a bad game for DeGrom. We should expect the hitters to be better this time around because they've seen him now. So DeGrom, not as much of a slam dunk as he typically would be, but I still think he's the top guy. I have DeGrom projected for 10.1 strikeouts. That's not the same as the 10.7 he was projected for last week, but it is still easily the top number on the slate. So I'm going to put DeGrom at the top of my list as a result. I understand now more than usual if you don't want to go there, given that it is a repeat matchup, uh, stuff like that. They did get to him. The results have not been great. I get it. But for me personally, I think DeGrom needs to be the top guy, and I will put him there personally above Gosman for tonight. Now, Gosman's matchup isn't as tough as, you know, I think the reputation says. Uh, He's on the road against the Astros. It's not as tough of a test as it used to be. I think that's a good thing for Gosman, and I think that gives us the leeway to consider him That's a good option beyond DeGrom here. Prefer DeGrom, but Gosman right there, which is, again, why I think it is justified if you don't want to go DeGrom number one for tonight. If we lower the sample and look at just this year, the Astros have a 96 WRC plus against righties with very minimal power and a 24% strikeout rate. Now, I'm still using 2022 through 2023 data because I think that's better over larger samples. With the Astros it might be better to go with the smaller sample because they have a lot of guys with no 2023 data. So, or 2022 data, I should say. So I think they'll get better in the long run as they get healthier once Jose Altuve is back, stuff like that. And they still got good hitters. I don't think they'll be bad for long, this bad for this long. But it does, for now, give us a window to target Gosman. And he's had a good start so far this year, a 1.35 ERA. His expected ERA is 3.08. His swinging strike rate is down a bit, and he's not throwing as many sliders, and that could be an issue. And that's part of why I have DeGrom above him, but in the three starts, Gosman has 7, 7, and 11 strikeouts. The 7 strikeouts in the first start were in a tougher matchup with the Cardinals than the one he gets tonight. I have Gosman projected for 8.6 strikeouts. That is within shouting distance of DeGrom, so it's enough for me to put him second for tournaments, and again... If you want to go there, I think that's fully justifiable, but he is higher salaried, slightly lower projection, stuff like that. That's why I prefer to grow. We'll talk about Corbin Burns as potentially another outlet in things to watch. Now, especially on slates where we have guys like DeGrom, Gosman, Burns, I don't always like any of the value plays because you need juice to keep up with those guys. And typically value plays don't have that. But I genuinely do like Lance Lynn tonight at $8,500 and we'll have him in my player pool. Lynn is facing the Phillies, which is not a great matchup, but it's also definitely not terrible. They have a 99 WRC plus against righties on the current active roster with a 23% strikeout rate. That matchup is at worst neutral. Lynn has gotten off to a rough start so far this year. He's let up eight earned runs uh, in one of his starts, six home runs across three games, But the strikeouts have been there. He has a 29% strikeout rate in three starts with a 14% swinging strike rate. His expected ERA is still very high, but it's due to all the hard contact and fly balls. The hard contact and fly balls may not matter as much if it's 41 degrees in Chicago for tonight. Again, the wind is out too, but I think the temperature matters a bit more here. So the hope would be that Lynn can cut back on allowing so much hard contact by letting up fewer balls in play. Can he do that? I'm not sure, but I've got Lynn projected for 6.5 strikeouts tonight. That ranks third on the slate behind DeGrom and Gosman. And especially with his salary down to $8,500 and both those guys being on the road while Lynn is at home, I think there's more than enough here to make him a viable option. So legitimately four guys I'm okay with tonight. Uh, Again, we'll talk about Burns later on, but DeGrom is good. I like Lynn and I do like, uh, Uh, Burns as well in Gossman. I think all those guys very much worth considering in daily fantasy for tonight. Prefer to Grom, but you've got a lot of leeway with a couple different viable options here. I think the same thing can be said about stacking where you've got four or five legitimate options. And I would say two of those are in contention for the top spot. 
Those two teams are the Brewers and the Rockies. Rockies are at Coors Field. The Brewers are not. But I think the matchup for the Rocky, the Brewers, is good enough where I'll still put them number one on my list. They're facing the Mariners in Seattle. I expect the roof to be closed for tonight because there was some rain in the area. So it's not a great park factor, but better than it would be if the roof were open. And it's a great matchup here. They're facing Chris Flexen, who has really struggled to start this year with eight earned runs and two and a third innings last time out. That was a win game at Wrigley Field, so that was part of it. But his expected ERA is 6.70. He has more walks and strikeouts. That was not because of the wind, letting up plenty of hard contact. And it's in line with what we saw from Flexen last year. Across a full year, his expected ERA was 4.62 with a 40% hard hit rate and a 46% fly ball rate. Those are all numbers we can stack against. The Brewers are a fine team against righties with a 110 WRC plus and a 178 ISO. That's good enough for me. So I think they are the top stack of the night, even above course field due to all those factors mentioned there. Now with Flexen looking at uh, opposing batters, we do want to factor in that he does have some reverse platoon splits because last year he allowed a 479 slug percentage to righties. So there aren't a ton of righties in this lineup, but I think that it does mean when you're ranking out the stacks, the guys to stack here, Willie Adamas probably should be number one. William Contreras should be higher than he typically would be. Contreras, rough start to this year, but the underlying numbers are okay, at least, making it more hard contact than you'd think. I do still like the lefties, very okay with them, but bump up Adamas, uh, bump up Contreras because of the fact that Flaxen has shown reverse platoon splits since the beginning of last year. Now, the Pirates are number two, or, or sorry, the Rockies are number two facing the Pirates at Coors Field. We'll talk about the Pirates and things to watch. Facing Kyle Freeland, I think that they're kind of more okay, but the Rockies are legitimately good. So let's talk about them here. They're facing Rich Hill. Three starts so far for Hill, and it's not a horror show, but it's it's close. Uh, his ERA, 7.20. His expected ERA, 8.80. Not enough strikeouts. Too many fly balls. So it's been a rough start so far for Hill. In Hill's defense, he's had some pretty tough matchups. He's faced the White Sox and the Astros, and the Rockies are not as tough as the White Sox and Astros against lefties. Their WRC Plus is 93 there, but that Coors Field, it's almost 70 degrees where it's warm enough where it can play like Coors Field for today. So I think the Rockies are standouts despite not being elite offense. They're pretty below average for sure against lefties. But I think here in this spot at Coors Field, there's enough to make them in the same range as the Brewers for potentially one of the top stacks of the night. Now, the last three times the Rockies faced a lefty, Alejurius Montero was out, but he's healthy now. He has a 220 ISO against lefties since the start of last year. He's not hitting the ball great so far this year, but also it's Coors Field. He's had good results despite that. So he should be back in there for today. I think that he makes a lot of sense. Salary is pretty low. Honestly, like all the Rocky salaries are pretty low for today. I think that you can stack them with the Grob. Even CJ Crone is at 38. Nobody else above 33. That makes the Rockies pretty stackable. So the Colorado Rockies, a justifiable stack and a good stack for today. The third slot for stacking is going to come down between the Cardinals and the Cubs. Uh, I like both quite a bit. I'm going to give the edge to the Cardinals, both due to weather and offensive quality. We'll talk about the Cubs later on. The Cardinals have the better matchup. They're facing Merrill Kelly, and he's looked okay. Or Sorry, they've got the tougher matchup, I should say, uh, And because and Kelly, Kelly's not a bad pitcher. He's looked okay in his first three starts this year, 2.93 ERA, and two of those starts were against the Dodgers. So that's pretty good, and he's been good for a while now. But Kelly struggling with walks. He's had four walks across each of his three starts so far. Batted ball data is not elite, letting up a 44% hard hit rate. And that hard contact is not confined to just those three starts. It actually dates back to the end of last year, where across his final four starts last year, Kelly started using more cutters and more curveballs. And he's doing that this year too. So it's a seven start sample. And in that time, Kelly's strikeouts are up, which we love strikeouts. That's a good thing. But Also a 43% hard hit rate in a seven-start sample. That's pretty worrisome. It may be a worthwhile trade-off for him because of the increased strikeouts, and it has been so far this year with a good ERA, but it does give upside (coughs) to opposing stacks. Cardinals are a very good team against righties with a 117 WRC+, plenty of power in this lineup, and I think that 
the the Cardinals belong just a hair ahead of the Cubs in our rankings for stacks for today. They also did just get Lars Newtbar back from the IL, and he's seen the ball really well. That's what I always want to see in when guys come out the IL is are they seeing the ball well? And Newtbar has drawn six walks in two games. Two of those were intentional, so didn't draw those two, but did draw four naturally. He can get stolen bases, which means a walk is not a total suck on his upside. And he barreled one for a home run yesterday. Salary for Newtbar is $3,000, two sources of upside, Seems pretty healthy, so I'm very in on Newt Bar for my Cardinal stacks because he's looked good enough, and I like the upside he brings for a low salary of $3,000. So Lars Newt Bar, to me, uh, we should be back on him despite his just coming off the IL. Things to watch. Did want to talk briefly about Corbin Burns because I'm curious how popular he will be for tonight. He had eight strikeouts and eight shutout innings his last time out with an 18% swinging strike rate. That was the best Corbin Burns has looked in I think a very long time. So I don't mind if you want to give him a look, if everyone is on DeGrom, Gosman, or others, I just want to get a read on his popularity first. It's always the toughest thing to judge early in the morning is where people will go for today. So need to get a read on that and decide, should I feel good about Burns? Should we maybe shy away? People are all on him. Uh, Go to DeGrom, take advantage there. But I want to get a read on Burns because I do like him a decent amount. And if he's going to go overlooked, he could be a very fun pivot for tonight. Other game at Coors Field besides uh, the Rockies is the Pirates facing Kyle Freeland. I don't think the the Pirates are a bad stack, but Freeland has a 3.67 expected ERA across three starts this year. He has a curveball this year and is throwing more sliders. So he's a very different pitcher. So I think it's okay to put a lot more stock in three starts. And he's been very good across those three starts. He's not as good as the results have been, but he's good enough to give us skepticism around the Pirates second against him, especially with the Pirates not being the world's most elite offense, lacking some key pieces. So Pirates are in play, but not a a must-must stack for tonight. The Cubs, I'd probably put above them. Uh, I think they're a fine stack. Facing Kyle Muller, who does a good job of getting ground balls, which does hurt the Cubs, but and the weather does too. But Muller lets up some hard contact. Cubs have a 105 WRC plus against lefties. They just got Seiya Suzuki off the IL as well to help out there a bit. So I don't mind the Cubs. I just like the Cardinals more. I think the Cubs probably pretty in line with the Pirates more. I think about maybe I should put the Pirates higher because it is Coors Field. But I think they're all kind of in the same tier. Cardinals, maybe a, a smidge above that tier. So tearing it out for tonight for stacking Brewers and Rockies 1-2. Cardinals a hair uh, above the rest, and then the Pirates and the Cubs in a tier by themselves as well below those other options. Let's finish up here with the Dinger calls for today. The boring one, CJ Crone is crushing the ball right now for the Rockies, and he's at Coors Field facing a lefty who has struggled with hard contact, so I can't not pick CJ Crone. CJ Crone, I think one of the easiest Dinger calls we've had on the show here so far this year. He's a boring one. The fun one, I do want to go Lars Newbar again. Uh, I like him because he has two sources of upside, but uh, can go yards. We saw yesterday uh, hit the ball pretty hard there. So we're going to go with CJ Crone and Lars Newbar as the home run calls for today. That's all we got here for today on the solo shot. Again, I think it's a pretty fun slate where you will need a lot of points, but honestly, I'm fine with that. Given the number of options we have, we can be different without being dumb. I think that is a quality slate as always. Do not forget to subscribe to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcast. We are doing these every weekday right here on the same feed. So go hit subscribe. And if you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating. If you have any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down Tuesday's slate. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.